Hello everybody, Miss Diff here. It's time to create with me featuring bees and honeycombs. So first off, bees are incredibly cool insects and we have to give major shout out to all of the photographers and magazines like National Geographic who are able to capture the presence of these amazing insects. Now, we know that bees live in hexagonal homes, but what does that mean? Well, let's take a step backwards. Beehives are made of beeswax and this is something that bees create themselves. The beeswax structure is called a honeycomb, and inside the honeycomb there are hexagonal spaces, which is where the bees store food, eggs, and larvae, which will grow to be the next generation of bees. So a hexagon. What is this shape? Well, it's a six-sided polygon, and when you repeat the shape over and over again, it creates a honeycomb pattern, which is what we are going to do today. Are you ready? Let's get started. First, let's try out a few different materials. I started by trying out a pencil and a colored pencil. I also added in some crayon for just different colors, but for the most part it was just colored pencil. Then I went to pencil and watercolor paint. Um, first I started with warm colors that I associate with uh, honeycombs and bees, but I also wanted to try doing a variety of colors, um, trying blues and purples, I think I added some greens in there. Next I went to crayons. After adding crayons, I went back and added some ink detail with my favorite black pen. Whenever I try different materials or different combinations of materials, I always try to label it. That way I remember what it was last time because sometimes it's easy to confuse too. Next, uh, one of my favorite things to do is outline shapes or just create patterns on top of other patterns with a different material. So in this case, I chose to use fine tip Sharpies, which I always are my go-to. Another idea is using bubble wrap. Now, bubble wrap is awesome because it comes in so many packages and it's easy to use, easy to recycle, and you can use bubble wrap as a stamp. I took acrylic paint in my paint palette, which is obviously has so many layers of paint in it. Today I went with warm colors again, press my bubble wrap in the paint, and then I press my bubble wrap stamp on the paper. And I repeated this process until I had a little bit of a test sheet of what this would look like. And voila, here are all of the different possibilities that I created. And of course there's many more than this, I didn't use marker or anything like that. Before you begin, you gotta pick your favorite. I am going to go with the bubble wrap print. There we go. I'm going to do a second one just because I wanted to try doing it with a different uh, color palette and of course I had to air dry it so I can move on to the next step. But one of the reasons that I decided to do two was because this way at the end, if I don't like one of them, well I can decide between the two which one I like better or in some cases maybe I'll like something from both and do a third one, but in this case it worked out and I was happy with both of them, so I picked my favorite later. Next, I just started drawing a bunch of bees with, again, my favorite go-to black pen. Um, I wasn't looking at any photos. I was kind of just drawing bees based on the photos that I had looked up. I read a really cool National Geographic article about them, so I, was, I had those images fresh in my mind. I decided to just add simple colors with watercolor because it was what I had out already. And then I have to cut everything out. Now, remember, my camera's in super speed, so please be careful. You can't uncut any legs, and you can't uncut any fingers, so take your time and be careful. Got all five bees cut out, lay them out there. I have bees in all different shapes and sizes because I thought it would be a little bit more interesting. Next, I'm going to cut strips of paper, one for each bee, just out of the scraps from what I had left over from when I cut out my bees. And then I cut the paper in half again. Um, and with, you need to have glue handy, but then you're going to fold each paper strip like a fan back and forth and back and forth. And you're gonna do this to all the paper strips that you cut for your bees. Maybe some will be shorter than and longer than the others too to get different heights for your bees. This is gonna create a bounce for them and l allow your bees to become 3D objects sticking off of your background. You wanna glue one end of the paper strips to the bee and the other end to the honeycomb design that you created. I always hold, um, whenever I'm using liquid glue, I always hold it and count to 10. That way I know for sure that the glue is going to hold and not slide. And then of course, remember my go-to saying, dot, 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 don't use a lot. You don't need a lot of glue. Just one little dot will do.
stick that on the paper there. All right, so I'm gonna do that same thing with all of my bees. For some of the bees, I did cut the paper platforms that I folded back and forth shorter, so that way some of the bees weren't sticking off quite as far from the paper um, to give different height variations among all the bees. And as you can see, I keep having to adjust them as I glue because they will move as they dry a little bit. All right, now, I said that I always do two things, and in this case I decided that I liked the orange one better. I just thought the colors really popped. I loved how the red and the orange and yellow paint stuck out. And that's it, there we go. Now it's your turn. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to see your creations and how you chose to represent your own bees and your own honeycombs. Think about how little insects so small can have such a large effect on our lives every day.